Hey guys, welcome back to Chef Monica's Kitchen. Today we are doing an awesome breakfast dish. This is something that you can make for a big crowd. I often will have brunches for like bridal showers, baby showers, whatever kind of showers, not thunder showers, whatever. Um, but it'll feed a big group of people. Or if I stagger my breakfast times, which we do a lot because we let people pick their own breakfast time, this actually will keep warm in the oven and it is a really easy breakfast to make for a big group of people and then serve it at different times. It reheats like a charm. You can serve it like brunch for dinner um, and you can assemble it ahead of time, put it in the refrigerator and then bake it off the next day. Super, super easy. Um, and it's also very versatile. So you can mix and match any kind of ingredients you like with it. Today we're kind of doing, I'm gonna guess sort of a Tex-Mex version of it. You can make a Mediterranean. You go with any flair you want to. So basics to start is 12 eggs, a dozen farm fresh eggs. These were from, let's see, I believe it was Mill Road Farm, picked it up locally. Um, to that, we're going to add two cups of cottage cheese. Make sure it's the full fat, and I prefer small curd to lard, large curd, lard? Large <laughs> curd. I don't even know what a lard curd cottage cheese would look like, but um, it blends in better that way. And I guess this would be like, take the place of say, for example, cream cheese, if you wanted to use cream cheese. Then we'll go ahead and add in a half a cup of olive oil instead of melted butter. So I'm lightening this up a teensy weensy bit only because it does have copious, copious amounts of cheese in it, which I mean, I don't care. That's just good and delicious. Um, there is about a um, quarter of a cup, third of a cup or so of flour. Um, you can make this gluten-free if you want to with gluten-free flour. That's the only thing you have to change. One tablespoon of baking powder. This will help kind of puff it up a little bit, give it a little texture. Here's where we get nasty. Four cups of shredded cheese. You heard me correctly. Four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'm using already shredded. If you want to shred it yourself and like build up your guns, by all means, go for it. My tendonitis in my shoulder is not cooperating, so I'm not doing that. So I bought pre-shredded cheese. This is the Mexican four cheese blend, but sometimes I like to use, they have like an Italian blend that has like Parmesan and mozzarella and all of those Asiago and all those good Italian cheeses. That would be great for a Mediterranean version of this. So we're gonna put all of that cheese in there. If your heart skipped a beat, it's all right. Just take we're not done yet. Just take an extra crust door tonight and you'll be just fine. Seriously though, I'm a cheeseaholic. I don't care what anybody says. There's no such thing as too much cheese. Some might differ with that mound, but when it's all mixed in, you'll hardly see it. It's feeding a lot of people. So it's only like a quarter of a cup of cheese per person. What's that in a day? I mean, really. Don't talk to my cardiologist <coughs> or my doctor. A little bit of Worcestershire sauce, probably about a teaspoon or so. Again, for that umami. A little pinch of salt, not too much because there's already going to be salt in the Worcestershire. Fresh cracked pepper. You're going to notice a lot of my favorites here in terms of spices. We're going to do some smoked paprika. I'm going to say about a teaspoon or so, maybe just over that. We're going to do our Italian seasoning. I checked to make sure that was the right thing. About a tablespoon of that. Copious quantities of garlic powder. And then freshly grated nutmeg. You know me and my nutmeg. I love my nutmeg, especially in eggs. And I'm going to use quite a bit. This time we're going to try not to drop it into Using the nutmeg and eggs is your nut for eggs? I'm a nut for eggs. I'm a nut for nutmeg is what I am, really. Right? I'm a nutmeg. I was going to use a different word, but I'm just going to leave that right there. Okay, so as far as vegetables, I, I have um, peppers, orange pepper again. Uh, we got some really gorgeous fresh asparagus, so we chopped that up and threw that, that in there. I didn't pre-cook it or anything because this is going to bake for about almost 40 minutes or so in the oven at 375 degrees, and it's going to cook through that way, and plus that way it'll stay nice and green in the dish, so it looks pretty. I had some fresh arugula I chopped up just for a little bit of like kind of a kick of bitter flavor. I happen to be one of those people who my palate is very... Um, well adjusted to the taste of bitter. I love like uh, radicchio and all those things that have sort of a bitter flavor to it. To me, they really round out the palate, um, especially when you've got that much cheese in there, it cuts a little bit of that. This was a Jeff request. 
some chipotles with the adobo sauce that I had mm. left over from Chile the other day. Not from Chile the country, but from Chile the food. Sometimes, sometimes it's hard to explain that stuff. So I wanted to put that in there just to give it a little bit of heat. And then, just to make life easy, I'm actually gonna whisk this together with a fork. If you try to use an actual whisk, all that will happen is all the ingredients will plump up in the whisk and nothing will happen. So this actually helps me to sort of beat the eggs in the bottom and then stir it all together, which will take me probably about three to five minutes. And I don't want to bore you with that, but you get the idea that once I stir it all together and it's all really, really well combined, I'll transfer that to a already greased Pyrex. And I gotta check the size of this. I never know what they are. If I can read them. <laughs> I can't read it. The it's, big one. It's a 15 by 10. It's a four quarter. Not quarter as in like the thing you spend money. Not money. Four quart as in like four cups. I don't know. Four <laughs> quarter. It's the big one. So I have no idea where I was going with that. Incidentally, I have to tell you, the dish, this particular dish, the very first time I had a variation of it was I think on one of the very first like family um, breakfasts or brunches that um, Jeff's family had where I first met like his extended relatives. And his mom made something like it with like just green chilies and sort of a really like very basic version of it. Cottage cheese, green chilies, that's it. That, yeah, basically it was just the basic eggs and the cheese and green chilies and that was it. But it was kind of a nice, it was a nice presentation and it, I, it, it gave me warm fuzzies. It brings back a nice memory when I got to you know meet all the aunts and uncles and all the extended family that welcomed me into their lives with open arms and lots of Jewish love. So. Which includes lots of food. Which, yeah, basically, Jew for love, or Jewish for love, is food. That's how you reach a Jewish man's heart, is through his belly. And that's what we're gonna do. When this is done, I will show you what it looks like. It's delicious, it's hot, it's bubbly, it's the bestest. So this just came out of the oven. It smells, it smells like the best pizza, but without a crust. Does that make any sense on the planet? No, it doesn't. That's okay. That's my, my interpretation. If, if I could convey what I'm smelling to you, that's what I'm smelling. Okay, I also have another confession. I am one of those people that loves, like when you make a grilled cheese sandwich, like the cheese that oozes out and then gets like burnt on the side, that's my jam. So I would even let this go slightly darker until it was almost that like crunchy brown on top. But not everybody likes it that way. So this is really kind of how it should look. This is golden brown. Golden brown. And you can see it did puff up significantly from that um, baking powder. So I just want to cut in to a little tiny bit of it so you can see what it looks like. See if I can show you a yummy little bite here. Okay. Let's see. The first one is always the hardest. But look at that. Okay oozy goozy you can see the asparagus and the pepper and all the cheese together it's light fluffy delicious and if i put this whole thing in my mouth i'm going to need a visit to the er so we're not going to nibble that. too hot 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 ah, too hot, hot. Ah. but so good <laughs> go away <laughs> 